Hey, what's up YouTube? I want to share a project that I've been working on for the past couple weeks. I'm building a camera slider for taking motion time lapses. And what that means is taking a camera slider like this and adding brains and a motor to the end of it to capture images at regular intervals. When you stitch them all together, you end up with a video that looks something like this. The reason I want to add motion to my time lapses is because I think it adds some depth and character that's otherwise missing in a static time lapse. But don't take my word for it. Listen to the executive producer of Planet Earth. We know when we go to the cinema now, the camera is never static. It's always on the move. It's always on a steady camera. It's always on tracks. It's always flying. And I think we wanted to reflect that in our approach. Not just because we wanted to homage to cinema, but because the reason why cinema does that is because as soon as you have that, sen that sense of moving camera, it feels more immersive, it feels more connected. With that said, let's take a look where I'm at with my prototype so far. Last week, I spent most of my time finishing up the hardware side. Most of my design is built from off-the-shelf components like tripods, ball heads, and even common 3D printer parts like a timing belt and stepper motor. Still, there's a few pieces that I need to custom manufacture. I'm fortunate to live in a city with shared access to a really good machine shop. It's called a makerspace, and they own tools that would be outrageous for me to buy alone, like laser cutters, water jets, and injection molding machines. Recently, I embarked on designing and creating some leg brackets for the two ends of my slider. Sure, I did some 3D modeling in college, but that was like 10 years ago. So I did some research to see which software was popular now. Fusion 360 from Autodesk came up over and over again, so I decided to give it a try. I went through a couple of iterations trying to design some super complex legs out of bent sheet metal before coming to the simplest one, which is just a small bracket with one 90 degree bend. I settled on using mini ball head tripods for the actual legs, which not only gave you the most flexibility to detach and become super portable, but also make the slider look sleek and professional. Now that I've designed the 3D model using Fusion 360, I just need to figure out how to make it. Since we designed this using the sheet metal tools in Fusion, we just need to tell it to flatten out our model. Now we have the flat pattern to cut. I bought a thick sheet of aluminum and we're at the water jet machine. I'm ready to fire it up and see how it turns out. Woohoo! Our piece came out just like it looked on the computer. Now that we have our precision cut piece, we just need to clean up some of the sharp edges and then bend it in the vise. The edges feel great. Now it's time to bust out my favorite low-tech tool, the mallet. Sweet! Now we tap it so the tripod can attach to it. I know this looks a bit rough, but you know what? This is a prototype and it does exactly what I need. Not only that, but I know a shop that'll professionally laser cut and bin these for about three bucks a pop. I'm taking off the old mounting bracket that I purchased from Open Builds to show why we need the custom part. The new bracket has mounting holes for not only the motor and rail, like the old one, but also the electronics and tripod. I designed it so a Sony NPF battery would fit in this pocket next to the motor along with the brains of the slider. NPF batteries are cheap and they are the de facto standard for any sort of camera accessories, like lighting kits or monitors. Right now, this is my full-time project, and I'm going to try to do these videos weekly. Next week, I'm talking about the software that I built for this camera. Eventually, that's going to make its way into the slider, so you don't need any wires to control the actual camera when it's shooting. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button for updates. Also, if you're curious about anything or any part of this project, leave a comment and I'll try to answer it the best I can. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. 